Okay, let's do this thing. Haven't done one of these in a while, but since this is the Winter is Coming edition, I kind of thought maybe since I haven't done an AEW TV review in a while, especially for Dynamite, I got a few things I want to say about this show. Mostly it's just all tournament matches that have been going on for the past few weeks, either that or Collision or maybe Rampage if there's any on there. Let's kick it off um, right off the bat with Winter is Coming. <clears throat> Arlington, Texas. Uh, we kick it off with Samoa Joe. Uh, Samoa Joe is out there basically talking about his match coming up with, um, MJF at Worlds Collide for the world title, but he talked about, uh, someone attacked MJF last week and talked about the beer bottle brand that was used and thought it could be Hangman Page, a certain cowboy and whatnot. Hangman came to the ring then basically saying it wasn't him, and Joe basically, you know, basically said, you know, Hangman, um, you probably did it, Hangman called him like a detective or something, but, uh, you know, Samoa Joe said, I'm not the detective here. I have the role of an executioner right now. Um, and as Hangman was about to say something else, Samoa Joe. As uh, Roderick Strong would put, Samoa, uh, Roderick Strong, he's not in a wheelchair anymore, folks. He can walk, but he still wears a neck brace and says, Adam. And basically talked about, you know, the devil that attacked MJF and said it could be one of them right there. Hangman ended up punching Roderick Strong. Samoa Joe basically left. Uh, at the argue with Hangman Page, and, um, Strong and, uh, Page start argue with each other, then they start fighting again. Basically, it was already leading into a match with Hangman and, uh, Strong. Um, a good match. I will say that. I feel like this segment, this match is starting to go on a little bit too long, though. Um, well, some say this feel like a Raw segment kicking off the show, but, uh, yeah, Hangman ended up beating Roderick Strong. He hit the dead eye for the win. Um... So, hey, man, basically trying to prove himself that he's not one of the devil people right now, which, honestly, I can't even say who's the devil person at this point. I know Hangman was now has been ruled out of it. We'll get to that later on. But, obviously, there still leaves a few suspects. So, whoever we don't know or expected who it's to be, I have no idea. I do feel like it may be a disappointment, whoever is revealed to be the devil mask and whatnot. But, we'll get to that a little bit later on. More tournament matches, though. It was Brody King versus Andrade. Listen, I... I saw Andrade versus Danielson, but I only watched half the match. I'm kind of glad they just played the finish of it there. End up with um, Andrade winning, I see. So he did beat Danielson on collision. Um, listen, this is a very good match. But here's the thing with this whole tournament. Let me, let me say this. I think a lot of matches have been really good in the tournament. Don't get me wrong. Solid stuff, most of them. But... That's all it really is, just solid matches. It's not nothing much from it other than they're fighting for three titles, which honestly I feel like don't even mean a lot. Listen, I think if they were fighting for a world title shot, I would actually understand that more out of this tournament. But the fact that they're fighting for the Ring of Honor title, the New, J the New Japan Strong Openweight title, and this Continental... Um, is that what it's called? A Continental title or something? Um, which we don't even know what the belt looks like. It's been in a cover for weeks, so... Everybody's basically fighting for three titles right now on shows that none of these guys are really on. Eddie Kingston, I guess he's on ROH, but then again, I don't even really know what's going on ROH. Hell, I didn't even know ROH had a pay-per-view this week, okay? This Friday coming up, and I'm going to say something about that in a second, but I didn't even know that. And I don't really know what's going on on New Japan, and, and I mean the strong open weight titles. So, I don't know what's going on there, but that, see, that's the thing. It's good matches. Don't get me wrong. And this is a really good match. And the crowd was hot for this, okay? I think the crowd was really hot for a lot of this the whole night. But at the same time, um, it's just really good matches. Not much out of this, okay? And you're just winning three titles. I feel like nobody doesn't really care about that much. Like I said, if it's for a world title shot, I'd actually understand more. But it's just matches out of all of this. Right after that, we actually had the Von Erichs show up, which I don't even know why they didn't have the Von Erichs show out there at the crowd. Kevin Von Erich. And his sons, Ross and Marshall Von Erich, basically talked about, you know, they here in AEW right now. And, um, saying they got a lot of friends around here. For some reason, they put the Von Erichs with the pocket guy out there, Dan Housen and, uh, Beretta. And I guess they're gonna team with each other or something this Friday on Rampage. I'm not gonna see that anyway, so, I don't know. But, but then here's the thing. If you have the Von Erichs here, and I know that new movie is coming out, uh, The Iron Claw, uh, I believe in the next couple weeks, if I'm not mistaken. Why aren't they out there live on TV on Dynamite? Like, it's the Von Erics. It's Texas. This is Von Eric country, right? Listen, I know the Von Erics are way before my time, but I know the Von Erics are, like, 
gods in Texas, okay? Like, they were the shit for real. So, the Von Erics are a big name and synonymous to um, Texas. And, I, I, like I said, I've seen a few... I've seen clips, like I said, I know most of the history of and what the whole Von Eric story and whatnot. Um, hell, even Kevin Von Eric, I remember when he got a big pop on TV, uh, true, I think it was like in TNA, like damn the, what, Slammiversary, I think it was? I know it was in Texas. Um, damn, what year was that? I don't know if it was 2014 or 15, but I remember the crowd going just ape shit for Kevin Von Eric. So why don't they have him live out on TV on um, Dynamite? I don't know. Why they have him with the pocket guy out there, two in the back? I don't know. So, that's all I can say. Kenny Omega and Chris Jericho um, were out there. The Golden Jets. Chris Jericho was taken out by Ricky Starks and Big Bill after full gear. Talk about his dislocated shoulder. I didn't even know this Golden Jets thing was still going. Kenny Omega looked like he just came out of a workout to just uh, come cut this promo as Jericho. Basically, kind of looks like a biker for some reason. Uh, but then again, that's his usual gear. Um... And they called out Big Bill and Ricky Starks, and I don't know whether to say this segment was even good or bad, but I felt like a lot of this was bad at the same time. And, you know, they call out Big Bill and Starks, Starks talking about them and the whole inner circle and Jericho Appreciation Society. Like, you know, Jericho's uh, like a vampire. He sucks the blood out of everything. And, you know, they're still cutting this promo and that, Omega say he doesn't trust Jericho, but let's talk about you, Big Bill. You were in the firm, but the flash said... I feel like a lot of these guys botched their promos out here. Um, Omega basically, you know, talk about we're going to win the tag team titles. If they're going to come up with a team name, which they called them the absolute assholes. And the the Bill and the something, the Rick and the Dick. And they had to keep censoring it. And then they, the last one they said was Big Billy Starks, and that one just fell flat. And it really did fall flat. Like, even Starks said that. those jo That last joke was not good. That was horrible. The crowd didn't even get it, and it was bad. He talked about Jericho's clothes, a hot topic, and, you know, Jericho called Starks like a less charismatic version of uh, Enzo Amore, and that Big Bill's, you know, a bit soft out there. I'd rather have them. Honestly, I'd rather have Enzo out there. He would have made the second one even more entertaining, though. Um... I, I wouldn't mind hearing him, but basically, they talk about y'all want a war, you got a war, and it's going to be at um, World's End for those tag titles, but I don't know. This segment, I felt, was all over the place. Do people really care about the Golden Jets like that? I, well, they did chant the Golden, the Golden Jets out there, so like, they got to care somewhat, but I don't know. I felt like the jokes they tried to pull out there weren't really good, and that last one with Big Billy Starks, that was bad. That joke, I don't even think no one understood that joke, so they didn't care. Uh, Tony Storm was out there for commentary for Rio. <laughs> I know that joke, I can't do it, but you know, Rio, but yeah, Rio versus Ruby Soho. I don't really care, honestly. Um, I kind of found it laughable that Rio was trying to take out Tony Storm after returning last week, which, um, I just kind of have to laugh from that. Like, why is Tony Storm backing off from this girl? I don't know. Why is Rio even in any type of shot for it? Any type of title shot? She hasn't been seen in months. But now is somewhat getting a title shot. And she beat Ruby. I only enjoyed Tony Storm on commentary because I just find it hilarious. Mr. Khan. Uh, Mr. Khan. Ta Taz. The Tasmanian devil. The Tasmaniac. I thought that was hilarious. Um, Next... Roosh went against Jay Lethal. It's actually a quicker match here. Um, Roosh won, uh, put Lethal into a sleeper, and won. Uh, I know Jeff Jarrett and them tried to check on Jay Lethal, but he looked dejected and kind of pissed off since he's lost every match in this tournament. Next was Jay White versus Mark Briscoe, um, which Jay White got the win. Once again, a solid match. Jay White won with the Blade Runner. Mark Briscoe hasn't even won a match in this tournament himself also. But I did appreciate the Dem Boys chant. I know he had to say something this week about whoever posted that thing with WWE with the whole Dem Boys thing and whatnot. Him saying something. But, um, yeah, Jay White won. But then you have to think about, like, does Jay White really need the Ring of Honor title? Does Jay White even need his New Japan Strong Openweight title? Like, this man was the IWGP champion before, right? So why would he be going for a lesser belt in New Japan? Think about that. I, I don't know. Um... You know, one thing that did catch my eye uh, out of all of this was, I guess, this Friday on the Ring of Honor pay-per-view final battle, 
Uh, I guess it's going to be like a tribute to Jay Briscoe, since that was his final match. Um, and it was... Um, hmm. It's going to be FTR and Mark Briscoe versus uh, Blackpool Combat Club in honor of Jay Briscoe. So, I don't know. That's, that's pretty cool to see. I I wouldn't mind seeing that. Um, but like I said before, I didn't even know ROH had a show this week. Um, or a pay-per-view, I should be saying, honestly. Uh, but in the main event, we did get... We did get uh, Swerve versus John Moxley in the main event. Crowd was going nuts for this match, I gotta say. Uh, I did enjoy this match. It was pretty good. I was actually thinking Swerve was going to win. But um, Mox ended up getting a leverage pin over uh, Swerve. So, of course, they went overrun over this time. Since they had to say Tony Khan said it would be, a, what, a five, six minute overtime for this match. And, yes, that they did go overtime. But, yeah, Moxley got the win. He beat Swerve. Crowd was into this. Swerve is just over as hell right now. And like I said, they were they were with both these guys. Uh, but as Mox left, um, next thing you know, they went to the back, or in the parking lot, I should be saying. And then they had the devil guys beat up Hangman. So he's not the culprit, folks. And he got choke slam onto a car as the leader of the devil like shook his head, yes, and slammed him on the windshield and glass broke. So I don't know. Some people think it's gonna be Jack Perry because look, people, real glass, but I don't know. I keep hearing it's Adam Cole. I keep hearing it's Kyle O'Reilly. Hell, I hear it's Britt Baker that's the devil. So, everybody's guessing the devil right now. Okay? Everybody is. Um, but, yeah, other than this, th the show itself, I, I don't know. It, it was okay. You know, last week, I did, like, last week's show. Mostly that was because of Edge and Christian. Other than that bad finish, that was coming a mile away. But, listen, other than the tournament matches, which, like I said, solid stuff, but... It's not much I can say other than just the matches itself were really good. That's all I can really say about that. It's not really much going on in this whole tournament. Everything else in this show, Samoa Joe trying to find the culprit um, who took out MJF with the devil guys. We'll see where that goes. Um, Rio versus Ruby Soho, I don't care. Um, the Jericho, Golden Jet, Stark's big build thing. I don't know what to take about that, but it, that was still pretty bad at the same time in that segment, okay? So it's not much I can say about Dynamite right now. Will I watch Ring of Honor Final Battle this Friday? Not really. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. I don't even know who's really on this card. Hell, since the Ring of Honor title is on the line in this whole tournament, is even a Ring of Honor title match this Friday on Final Battle? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's going on ROH right now, so... I didn't even know it was a pay-per-view this week. Like I said it multiple times now. So, I don't know. But other than that, comment, subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, Hood Tonight 890. Um, check out any other past reviews. Check out my NXT Deadline review uh, with Straight Face 40. That's available online right now. So, uh, go check that out if you get the chance. So, yeah. Other than that, I'm out of here. See y'all then. Peace out.